Do people care about scientific research that constrains the potential identity or the potential likelihood of there being a Loch Ness Monster? Or is the beauty of the myth, the beauty of the fable, enough? Will we just get a Loch Ness Monster of the Gaps? What's up, you scholars of enlightenment? Just a quick one today. So, Loch Ness Monster may be giant eel, say scientists. So myth and legend clashes with science and also a beloved part of my childhood. Now I'm a scientist, but also a great lover of science fiction. And my favorite science fiction show is Stargate SG-1. Don't at me, Star Trek fans. But I love Stargate SG-1 so much because of that interplay between science and myth and legend and old history and the way that science in the show sheds more light on those ancient fables. <coughs> So what's the deal in this case? Well, an international team of scientists from Otago University in New Zealand say they've identified a plausible theory for sightings of the Loch Ness Monster. So they collected 250 water samples from various depths in Loch Ness. So they have a representative sample of the water. And that includes, or will contain, all forms of environmental DNA of the creatures that exist in Loch Ness. So the work was aimed at cataloging all the types of life that exist in Loch Ness, including plants, insects, fish, and mammals. And the DNA from the water samples was extracted and sequenced, resulting in about 500 million unique DNA sequences. And they've now been analyzed and compared to existing databases. So contains all sorts of things, humans, dogs, sheep, cattle, various fish, badgers, voles, birds, all sorts of things that have interacted with the water in Loch Ness. Ugh, back to the lock with you, Nessie. But crucially, the research didn't find any DNA of a large creature, particularly the types of large creature that are often cited as potential Loch Ness monster candidates. So, they found no evidence of a prehistoric marine reptile like a plesiosaur, which is sometimes put forward as a Loch Ness candidate, um, or any large fish like sturgeons. There was no shark DNA in the samples. So a lot of the potential theories around the Loch Ness Monster seem to have gone out of the window. What the hell are you? Talking about a potential leviathan under the waters of Loch Ness, the researchers said that we can't find any evidence of a creature that's even remotely related to that in our environmental DNA sequence data. So sorry, I don't think the plesiosaur idea holds up based on the data that we have obtained. Get the fuck out of here. And they added, so there's no shark DNA in Loch Ness based on our sampling, no catfish DNA in Loch Ness based on our sampling, and we can't find any evidence of sturgeon either. However, there is a very significant amount of eel DNA. Eels are very plentiful in Loch Ness with eel DNA found at pretty much every location that was sampled. And there are lots of them. So are they giant eels? Could the Loch Ness monster be a giant eel? Well, our data doesn't reveal their size, but the sheer quantity of the material says that we can't discount the possibility that there might be giant eels in Loch Ness. Therefore, we cannot discount the possibility that what people see and believe is a Loch Ness Monster might be a giant eel. What I'm trying to do is not grip it too tight because if with eels, if you fight them, they fight back. 
the villagers confirm that this is a totombale. This fish has really given me the run around and uh, finally here I am, middle of the night, covered in slime and I finally have it. So science is kind of chipping away at a legend. It's constraining the identity of a potential Loch Ness monster if it does exist. Now, on one hand, I kind of love this progress. Like I said, I like that interaction between science and a great legend. But on the other hand, it's kind of a little bit sad because I like that idea of people sat out for months on end just hoping for a glimpse of the Loch Ness Monster or running into a behemoth at sunset and having to turn tail and run away or dredging the depths of the loch with simplistic um, apparatus. So a little bit of mixed feelings on this. And thinking a bit more widely, I wonder if this will have any impact on the tourist draw that is Loch Ness. Do people care about scientific research that constrains the potential identity or the potential likelihood of there being a Loch Ness monster? Or is the beauty of the myth, the beauty of the fable enough? Will we just get a Loch Ness monster of the gaps? I'll leave that as a question to you. So let me know down in the comments section or over on Twitter. And if you'd like to hear and challenge more of my opinions on some of the world's biggest and most controversial topics, then remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. I can't tell you how much it helps me out and how much more motivation I feel when you guys discuss and interact with the content. Thanks for listening. Thanks for being scientific. Thanks for being bad.